welcome back to the channel. Today is kind of a special day because I am reviewing a Cordoba concert ukulele. This is the UP100, the UP100. Kind of special to me uh, because about six years ago, I bought my first ukulele and it was a Cordoba concert. It wasn't this one, but it was something similar. So a few years after that, my youngest grandson came to me and said, uh, Grandpa, I'd like to have a, a ukulele also. And so I did some research and ended up purchasing him this ukulele. Now this is the uh, UP100, and this is the one that comes in the Cordoba ukulele pack. So you have somebody typically just like what my grandson was. He wanted to er learn the ukulele, and so I went to the local music store, talked to the guys there, and bought him the Cordoba pack. So what it, basically, it's, it's a starter pack. It's everything you need to be able to begin playing the ukulele. So you get the uke, you get a, a gig bag, it's like a tuner and some picks and, uh, you know, a little music book and, and all of that. So uh, I went and bought him one and we uh, set it up, put some strap pins on it, different strings, and he's had it ever since. He's had it for probably at least four years, maybe even longer than that. And then that snail that I reviewed not too long ago, uh, is also his. So what do you get for, I mean, if you, if you quickly Google Cordoba UP100, you'll find the website, Cordoba's website, but you'll also find a bunch of people that sell these. Uh, you know, 100 bucks maybe for the pack, maybe slightly less. I wouldn't pay more than that for it. Not because it's not a good uke, just because you can get them anywhere for, you know, $80, $90, $100. So the UP100, this is like the entry-level mahogany concert ukulele. And so you can see it's, it's surprising what they can do for inexpensive, built in, built in China, obviously a laminate, but it, it's a great looking uke. It's a, a laminate mahogany, and it has um, rosewood fingerboard and rosewood bridge and um, the Cordova tuners, open gear tuners. I really like those. I mean, this thing sat in the case forever, and I took it out, and it took me like 10 seconds to tune it. It was that close, which I thought was, was pretty amazing. So... This is a great uke for someone who is just beginning with ukulele. Or, hey, maybe you've got uh, a few koalohas and kamakas, but it's winter, it's cold out, you really don't want to take that to the local jam, but you'd like a uke that plays well and sounds, you know, decent, and uh, this one plays great, and as you heard, I think it sounds fine. It, it... Uh, is a good value for the money, for the beginner, or maybe somebody that's got a bunch of ukes, but they really don't feel good about uh, taking them outside. So uh, this is a ukulele that you could hang on the wall and let it set for a year and pick it up and tune it in 10 seconds and it would, it would sound great. The heat's not gonna affect it. The air's not gonna affect it. Um, it's no need to humidify. And of course, this is one of the great things about a laminate uke versus an all solid uke. All solid ukes, especially in the wintertime when your heater's running and drying out the air, they've got to have a humidifier with them in the case, and you've got to take a little more care, which is fine. I mean, I've done that dozens of times with different ukes and guitars. Really expensive on both ends there as far as guitars and, and ukuleles. And if you go through my YouTube channel or my my uke blog, you'll see the kamakas and the kolohas and all that stuff. 
but it's nice to be able to have a uke that uh, you don't have to worry about as much. It's going to be fine. You can hang it on the wall. The thing about having it out on the wall is it's much easier to grab it and play it. So I, uh, I think, in fact, this has been in the case so long, I took it out. I started strumming. I go, man, this thing sounds incredible for a, a uke that came in a pack with a case and all the other stuff for, you know, I probably, it was probably somewhere around $100. <laughs> strings. I mean, listen, it, it, it has a definite sustain there, no question. And then we've got the Still rings, beginning of Christmas time this year. We always check that note. Sounds good. Um, a nice ukulele. I put some strap pins on it, you know, and check the nut and the, the action, and it plays really good. Out of the box, actually, it was really, really fine. Now, that's something that, you know, you could even have the place you would go to Guitar Center and buy and have them check it out. And, and I personally... Having worked in a music store in years past and sold a bunch of packs of like strats and, you know, acoustic guitars and ukes and all that, I think it's really good to go in and uh, check the instrument. Don't just buy the pack and go home and wait for Christmas morning, open it up, and find two strings are broken, the next bowed and all that. No, open it up, check it out, have them plug it in, make sure the amp works if you're getting an electric, et cetera, et cetera. Don't just buy it by faith and assume everything's okay. Now, I can tell you, having been in a music store and gone through a ton of packs, that most of the time, or many times, they are. But there's always that, okay, I mean, you don't want some kid to be excited about his first bass guitar, open it up, and find that the, it's unplayable. So that's not, that's not good. Now, from where I'm sitting, it sounds different to you than it does me because I'm above the sound hole. I mean, I'm here, it's sustained in there, it sounds good, it stays in tune well. You don't have to spend a thousand bucks on a uke to get a decent sounding instrument. Is this the best instrument on the market? Of course not. Is it an instrument you could buy and play for years and take to your uke jam and stuff and it would sound good? Yeah, I wouldn't hesitate to do that. I mean, I've taken, I've taken, you know, thousand dollar, you know, sopranos, and I've taken uh, laminated uh, sopranos and baritones. Same thing. I mean, the last thing I want to do, uh, because I've taken baritones to uke jams before, they really like that. They like to have that low end, etc. As long as you know how to play it, when they're playing an F, what you play as an F is obviously different. But when you do that, it adds a lot to the jam but you're probably not going to take your Pohaku baritone out to a uke jam when it's snowing. Uh, at least I wouldn't, and I had one, and it was a fantastic instrument. But I wouldn't take that. I, honestly, this Makala that I've used before recently in some of my baritone demos, I would take that in a millisecond. All laminated mahogany, cost me less than 100 bucks. sounds fantastic. I set it up, put some living water strings on it, and it'll keep up with anything else around. So it, nobody's going to be going, oh my God, he's playing a Makala. Nobody cares, really, honestly. They don't care you're playing, playing a Pohaku that costs 1500 bucks, or a Makala that play, costs probably 80 bucks. It doesn't matter. What's the most important thing? It's the player. You need an instrument that's that's decent, it has a, a nice neck, it's not bowed and all that. Uh, I've got one of those, I've got a 1960 Silvertone Baritone that basically 
I bought as a coat collector item that's not really playable. It looks cool, but you can't really play it. It just needs to have a decent neck, good construction, sounds good. It doesn't have a bunch of dead notes on it. Uh, intonation's decent. And you can take this and go to any U jam you want to. I wouldn't hesitate for a hundred bucks. <laughs> Come on. And, and by the way, I do not work for Cordova. So um, now as we look at this, I've showed you, the one thing I didn't really point out was it's got obviously the, the markers on the top, but it does not have the markers on the side. And if you know anything about me, you know that I really need that. Even if it's a Kamaka with a marker at the seventh, that really gives me some point of reference. I prefer that myself. So if this was my uke, I'd probably add the side things. But other than that, I, I, I highly recommend this. Christmas is coming. Tomorrow's December 1st. Someone in your family said, oh, you play uke. I'd like to learn how to play the uke. Oh, I've got to buy them a, you know, $1,500 Kamaka. No, you don't. Don't you a hundred dollar pack, open it up, make sure everything's okay, tune it up, play it, or have the person who works at the store play it, and then bring it home, wrap it up, and they will they won't know the difference, first of all, and they're just gonna love it. They're gonna they're gonna love it, and it's gonna last them forever. This will last my grandson, who's now 16 and driving, um, the rest of his life if he wants it to. There's no reason why, it, as long as he takes care of it and doesn't set it down, you know, and step on it or something, um, it's going to be fine. Listen to it. Now, what's next? Well, I reviewed the um, Snail concert, uh, and I reviewed this. I've also done a Caramel that I actually added the side dots to, and... All of that, uh, gosh, a couple of years ago at least, maybe longer, probably, probably a couple of years ago. I gave that to my other grandson, uh, and then I've got an Enya. Now, all of those four, those are the only concerts I have now. Colo is gone, unfortunately. So I have four concerts that really are in the same type of classification, more of a, an entry-level uke, which is fine. But how do they sound in comparison to one another? So I have never done a comparison with four instruments. So I think next time what I'm going to do, what I'd like to do is a comparison of those four instruments that are all entry level, all safe to hang on the wall, uh, all laminate. The one, one is a high pressure laminate, the Enya and uh, share with you how they sound and how they play and um, what I think. I mean, the, the, you can go back and look at the video of the caramel, but I, I, I think I paid like, gosh, 50 bucks for that. So, uh, I would suggest um, coming back and we're going to do that in a week or two. So down here, you can subscribe. You can also hit the bell so you'll get all the notifications of when I post. And uh, I would really appreciate if you do that. Also, you know, a lot of people, I watch a lot of YouTube videos, but very few of them talk about sharing. Share this video with friends and other people that you know that play, etc. So, um, this is part a little bit of our... UP100, a Cordoba. Check it out. And next video, God willing, will be four entry-level concert ukes. How do they compare? Until then, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.